when it comes to becoming a better 3D modeler, speed is always a skill set that you should look to develop. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some killer tips on how to improve the speed of your 3D modeling that's going to have you well on your way to becoming a 3D modeling beast. What's going on, 3D modeling beasts? This is JL Musi, and today I'm gonna to be sharing my top tips on how you can improve your speed of your 3D modeling. So before we dive into the actual tips, let's quickly look at the reasons on why uh, improving the speed of your 3D modeling is so important. Uh, first reason is that it makes you more valuable to employers. Anytime that you're working in a studio environment or even freelance, uh, you often have deadlines to actually meet. Uh, the quicker that you could actually meet those deadlines, the more value you're going to bring to that potential employer. Uh, also, you're able to actually complete projects quicker. So if you're doing freelance uh, and you're actually charging a fixed rate, uh, that means you could actually make more money in less time. Second reason on why speed is so important is that you actually get more bad models out of the way quicker. So that really means that you're actually failing quicker. You're learning from your mistakes quicker. And sometimes it does take a while for you just to develop uh, good habits and uh, also figuring out the bad habits that you are developing, you know, stepping back and assessing, you know, what's actually truly working uh, and what truly is not. And lastly, speed actually builds momentum. So once you actually get some speed going and they're able to clear that technical barrier quicker, uh, it's actually going to revert more into pure artwork and creating uh, artwork is really what's going to motivate you and uh, help you uh, keep momentum on your side and make great looking art. Uh, before we get started, make sure to smash the like button. It really does help the channel grow and really get this video out to more artists that are looking for this type of information. If you haven't done so already, make sure to download your copy of the Hard Surface Modeling Cheat Sheets, which is a great companion piece to all my YouTube videos. And make sure to stick all the way to the end because I actually have a real cool bonus tip for you. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. Most of these uh, strategies to improve the speed of your 3D modeling can actually be implemented regardless of what 3D package you're using, whether it's Maya, Modo, Blender, 3D Studio Max, of symmetry and how it could dramatically improve the speed of your 3D modeling. So if we actually take a look at this model right here, uh, this is an asset that I built uh, for uh, a 3D Maya modeling course that I currently teach. If you're just starting out as a 3D modeler, uh, this can seem a little bit intimidating, just the amount of detail and the amount of pieces. If we go here and we hide this and we enable these pieces here, uh, now the intimidation factor should subside a little bit, right? Uh, this should look a little bit more manageable. Uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, this shape uh, and these shapes uh, are actually pretty much the same. Meaning uh, this is pretty much all the unique detail that I modeled here and I use symmetry within Maya, and this can be done pretty much in any 3D package using uh, standard uh, symmetry tools and duplication tools. But uh, I took these pieces and I applied uh, some form of symmetry and I got this result, right? So if I take a look at this uh, chain link here, right? Um, it's actually an offset pattern, uh, meaning uh, I have two unique links, but this is all I really uh, needed to model as far as unique detail, right? Uh, for these two links. And then symmetry took care of the rest and I had this. And then once uh, this was built, I basically used a duplicate special to create pretty much the rest of this pattern. Same exact thing for this piece right here. I modeled uh, this exactly like I would a five spoke rim where I modeled half of that fifth. Then I applied symmetry to that to get one fifth. And then I used uh, radial symmetry to actually build the entire shape. So if I go back here and I enabled uh, pretty much uh, all these pieces here and just move them off to the side. So this is pretty much uh, the unique modeling that I did. And this is pretty much the result. So as you could see, there's not that much unique modeling that I did here, right? So by looking at this and then looking at the result, uh, you could definitely see the speed of using symmetry with your 3D modeling. So that's one of the great advantages of using symmetry that it saves time. 
scripts or plugins. And this is usually something that I don't recommend for a true beginner to use because you might rely too much on a plugin uh, or a workflow, including that plugin or script uh, that uh, might lead to a dependence on that plugin. And then uh, you actually might uh, have a situation where you're working in a studio or you're working on a project that you can't use that plugin. So that's why I've been hesitant in the past to recommend scripts or plugins. Uh, but I actually found this great set of scripts by an artist called Malcolm 341 And it doesn't really do anything that Maya can't natively do. It just does it more efficiently with more thought behind it. And it does it a lot quicker. Let me go ahead and explain. So I'm going to quickly talk about some of my favorite tools in the pack. And the first one I want to talk about is the create primitive at selection. So a lot of times uh, I'm creating objects that are pretty much off in space and rotated uh, locally, right? Or on object mode. So if I wanted to create a cylinder here, I'd have to go in, uh, create this uh, cylinder here, try to basically rotate it or maybe use some of the transform tools. But that usually just takes too long when I can use a script like this where I can just select the face where I want to originate uh, that primitive from. Go here to create primitive uh, add selection, right click. And then I can simply uh, create a cylinder and there we go. There's a cylinder uh, quickly created. So you can see that uh, this is a pretty handy tool. Uh, let's go ahead and delete this guy here. And maybe uh, I wanna go ahead and scale this up a bit further. Maybe I wanna create a bunch of cubes from here. So then again, I could right click here, go to cube. For example, a lot of these tools actually have uh, a lot of customizable uh, parameters that are pretty uh, easy to set up. So maybe I didn't want that cube that big. I can right click and then I can just do edit, pop-up menu items here on the cube. I can change the scale. So instead of doing 10, we'll do two. We'll exit out of that. Now I can go in here, select this face, right click, I'll go to cube, and there we go, right? So you can see how quickly that was. So with the cube size uh, quite a bit smaller, I can go in here, I can hit G to redo that last tool. And now you see that I'm quickly uh, redoing that tool and I'm getting a pretty much a predictable result here. The last script that I wanna cover uh, from his uh, pack is uh, the extract and duplicate. Extract and duplicate is something that I do a lot in Maya and it's something that I spent a lot of time cleaning up uh, within the outliner. Uh, due to its messy nature, right? So if I go in here and just show you the native tool, uh, you see that uh, we have a uh, basically this cylinder cap here. I'm just gonna go ahead and select this vertex. I'm gonna convert that selection to faces. Now we have this cap. And a lot of times what I wanna do is basically uh, duplicate or extract these uh, primitives uh, from each other, right? Uh, you see that if I use pretty much the menu way that Maya has it, where I go to edit mesh and extract. So now we have this messy hierarchy here. Uh, we have pretty much these two poly surfaces, right? In this transform node. And usually what I'll have to do is go in here, do edit, delete by type history, right? Just to delete that transform node. Then I'll have to go in here, middle mouse click, drag this out of this group. Same thing here, drag this out of this group and uh, simply go in here and delete this entry group node just to get these two separate shapes. And what this set of tools it actually does is it extracts and duplicates and it does pretty much all that cleanup instantly. So I'm going to delete this, create that cylinder again, take that cap, convert that uh, vert to faces. Now I'll run the script and you see how much cleaner that result's going to be. So I'll do the extract and there we go. I have the extracted face and pretty much uh, the original piece that this was extracted from. And I could also do this with the uh, duplicate option, right? So a lot of times, instead of extracting, I want to duplicate. So again, I'll take this vert, convert the selection uh, to faces to get that cap. Instead of extracting, I'll go ahead and duplicate. And now we have this duplicated, right? We still have our original pretty much unscathed and we have a very clean outliner, right? Uh, and this is something that I use quite a bit. Obviously, I showed you with primitives. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go in here, right? 
and I'll take pretty much patterns like this. So what I can do is I can select this intervert here. I can go ahead and convert this to a face and then just simply grow my selection. So now I have uh, pretty much this pattern that uh, I might want to go ahead and work with. And I can go in here and do the uh, duplicate option. And if we look here within our hierarchy, right, uh, we have pretty much this clean piece. So now I can just center the pivot and there's our clean shape. And uh, w when you are working with uh, group hierarchies, uh, the script will basically try to respect that, which is pretty nice. So it won't throw it way off somewhere else. Uh, it'll recognize that you have it in a group hierarchy. It'll respect that. And, uh, you know, I didn't have pretty much a mess of multiple nodes and transforms to clean up. So I've been using the script uh, Mega Pack for the last two weeks. Definitely been loving it. Definitely actually made a difference in the speed of my 3D modeling. And I'm pretty uh, fast at modeling. But, you know, this just cut out a lot of the uh, repetitive stuff or a lot of the weak areas uh, that Maya has as far as uh, just pretty much optimizing things like the outliner or just really some of the weaknesses uh, within the built-in tools. And I definitely recommend that you do get the script mega pack. Uh, you can buy these separately, uh, but you actually save quite a bit of money. And for under 25 bucks, uh, you could actually get all the scripts that Malcolm releases and any uh, new script that he does uh, actually create, it will actually get placed within the mega pack uh, and you actually get a free lifetime update, which is very, very nice. It's actually a great value, uh, not only for modeling tools, but he has some great uh, UV layout tools as well. So check out the script mega pack using the link down below. Next tip on how to speed your 3D modeling is actually to create blockouts uh, of your model as a starting point. So a blockout is pretty much uh, meant to establish uh, basic primary forms, keeping things simple. Uh, when you start doing uh, a block out, the advantage of it is that things are pretty simple, uh, pretty light in topology. One of the benefits of creating a block out like this for maybe a uh, bicycle, right, uh, is that you get to see everything almost completed, right, everything being represented, and you actually get a good idea of everything's going to fit together. Uh, the last thing that you would want to do is go through the whole process of modeling this with a bunch of detail only to figure out that, you know what, uh, this uh, crank set here doesn't quite fit, or maybe uh, these rims right here, right, start penetrating uh, into this uh, frame right. So creating a block out might seem like a waste of time because at the end of the day, uh, most of these pieces will uh, pretty much get replaced. Early on, it does help you establish your primary forms, uh, figure out what everything needs to be, and it's gonna ensure that everything fits together before you invest a lot of time and detail into a piece that might not really work or fit together with your design. Creating a, a block out has a lot of uh, other advantages that actually tie into time, meaning that while you create the uh, final version of this uh, model, you can pass on the block out to a technical artist or a rigger and they could actually start building the controls because uh, most of the uh, primary forms or shapes already been established, right? So that rigger can go ahead and start building that rig. Another great benefit of using a block out is that it's very uh, freelance friendly, uh, meaning that uh, you could actually incorporate the block out as a milestone payment. So you could actually create the block out uh, for a client and that client can actually approve that block out or send it back for more revisions. Uh, that gives you the added benefit that you didn't really spend a lot of time creating these complex shapes yet the client could actually get a good idea of what the final product is going to look like. And talking about the final product, uh, if we go in here and we unhide, uh, we see that uh, this is the final product of the bike. And if we take this and we overlay it uh, with the final model, uh, you see that uh, there's not really a lot of uh, big changes that happen here. The frame is identical really just mainly uh, this seat right here. So creating the block out is gonna give you a more uh, predictable result as far as the end product. And it's also gonna cut back on a lot of backtracking and redoing pieces that you thought were initially gonna fit and end up that they actually don't. And the bonus tip for improving the speed of your 3D modeling is a process that I call boolings and clean. 
Uh, yes, Bullings actually reminds me of this stupid meme that I saw on Bullings. And the overall idea of using Bullings to create clean shapes uh, is a concept that some artists do miss. And this is something that I experienced that, uh, you know, I always thought that Bullings were a bad thing or they led to bad geometry. But, but if you actually do a little bit of planning beforehand and have a good idea of what the end topology should be looking like, uh, Bullings can be a great uh, asset within your 3D modeling time-saving arsenal because it allows you to create more complex shapes quicker. And sometimes uh, it allows you to create shapes that would be very, very time-consuming uh, to create uh, without Booleans themselves. So here I have a sped up video where I'm working on a piece that was created primarily with Booleans and then it was cleaned up later. Uh, and what Booleans allow me to do is create the cutouts, uh, but especially the cutouts where the bolts go in, I was able to do this all at one time. And me just pretty much knowing what to look for and trying to actually match up the subdivisions of these meshes before these pieces are bull length uh, actually allowed me to get predictable and great results. And I didn't have to spend that much time actually cleaning it up. I think a lot of people get into trouble uh, creating bull lanes when they have a super dense mesh that they're uh, pretty much uh, cutting in or combining with a relatively low res mesh. Uh, and then, you know, there's kind of a geometry flow issue where you have a lot of geometry flowing from one object into an object that doesn't have that much geometry. And there's a lot of time that has to be uh, spent actually cleaning it up. But if you do a little bit of planning beforehand, uh, you could actually get pretty clean results like I did here with bullets. Thank you so much for tuning in and spending some time with me on how to improve the speed of your 3D modeling. As always, make sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments down below. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already for more 3D modeling tips like this. Until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.